Which asset class carries with it the highest investment risk? Stocks or cash? Welcome to YCG, where we help your capital grow. If that's something that interests you, then hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss a thing. I'm Will Kruger, CEO here at YCG, and today I'm joined by Brian Yachman, President and Investment Officer, Chief Investment Officer, and Elliot Savage, Partner and Portfolio Manager here at YCG. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, great to be here. So let's get right into it then. This is uh, our common sense segment, and we're talking about stocks versus cash. Uh, Elliot, I'll start with you. As we look at history, what have we learned about these two asset classes, and, and what are your thoughts about uh, the investment risk, uh, the re investment returns that we can um, expect to achieve either investing in stocks or versus cash? Yeah, uh, well, you know, we, we really think that the main risk that investors, or one of the main risks that investors face over time with um, investing is the, the erosion of their purchasing power over time. Because unfortunately, the government uh, prints money every year. And so if you do nothing, uh, you, you get a, um, unfortunately, you know, your the value of your money goes down. And so a lot of people, though, feel comfortable with the with cash because it doesn't actually move in value. A dollar is a dollar tomorrow. But if you think about it in terms of purchasing power, we have a chart here that shows, you know, Einstein once said that compounding is the eighth wonder of or is reported to have said that compounding was the eighth wonder of the world. And this chart really shows this uh, strong. Th these two charts, actually, that we're going to show really really uh, show this. So the first one is uh, shows cash. And from 1913 to 2017, cash actually lost 97% of your, your purchasing power. And so wow. really, you've only had, uh, you can only purchase 2% of the things that you could purchase uh, back in 1913. And then if you compare that to this next chart, which is stocks, uh, you can see that uh, it's, you're not even really going to believe the numbers because uh, if you were to have invested in stocks in 1900 until through 2019, as opposed to losing 97% of your value, you actually multiplied your purchasing power by two, almost 2,000 times. And we it's just unreal. think that those numbers are astounding. Yeah. And you bring that up just over like the, the these are 100-year periods, and some people might be thinking... Well, yeah, but I'm not going to live that long to have to watch my cash erode 90 something percent over time. But I mean, consider you think of the rule of 72, which is take 72 divided by the, the rate. Let's say inflation's 2%. 72 divided by 2 is 36. That means in 36 years, that's how long it takes to double, or in this case, go in half, cut your value in half. So just in a, you know, that's easily in a lifetime. In 36 years, you could easily lose half the value. Uh, and if, if yeah. inflation runs higher, you can lose half the value in 24 years, right? At 3%, 72 divided by 3 is 24. So it's yeah, wild. it's really amazing. Pretty staggering statistics. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you see and hear so many people trying to time the market. Um, why not try to do that, Brian? Why not, you know, try to take advantage of both asset classes and go in and out of, of the other. Why not do that? Well, it's certainly appealing the sound of that, right? Like, hey, go to cash, it seems so smart. And then we'll wait for things to decline. And then when they're cheaper, we'll buy in. Yeah. Sounds easy in, in principle and theory, but man, in practice, it's super hard. Um, the evidence is so strong that investors on average, uh, they call it the investor behavior penalty. They will on average be worse off trying to time things than, than had they just invested in these great businesses and let it compound. Uh, one of my favorite ways to illustrate this is this chart here. It shows that you know economists that are focused on trying to provide the most simplest basic statistic on the economy, gross domestic product, what will happen to GDP? And the reason they spend so much time on that is because if, if you can accurately predict GDP, well, the stock market is like a second derivative and it will you know, go based off of that. Well, what you see in this chart is that on average, these economists that are professional forecasters are almost always wrong. Uh, they, they, they hardly ever get it right. And in fact, not once did they actually accurately predict that GDP would go negative. 
And so if you can't accurately predict the first derivative, trying to predict the second derivative of what will happen to stock prices is even more uh, challenging. So we just think it's a waste of time to uh, try to get cute. If, if you take as the first principle that stocks will outperform cash over the long run, if you believe in that, and you believe in the second principle, that on average, if you attempt to time it, you're gonna get worse off, then naturally the combination of those two principles says you're better off if your goal is to increase your purchasing power over the long run to invest in stocks. Courage and patience it rings in my mind as far as uh, the, the, the overall strategy that we're, we're discussing here. I like that. So, so Elliot, is there any reason to hold cash? Um, or should we own stocks 100% of the time, your entire net worth? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so the, you know, when a lot of people think about uh, stocks and the risks of stocks, the, the, the main risk that people think about is, is the volatility of stocks. They, they, unfortunately, you really just don't know over the next five to 10 years, you know, where they, they can really trade anywhere. And so the, so the two uh, biggest, I would say, legitimate reasons that we think it's valuable to hold cash uh, are number one for liquidity. And so if, if you have certain expenses that are coming up or you're trying to protect against the uncertainties of the future, like job loss, we think that's a really great reason. And every, everyone should determine because based on their own personal circumstances, you know, what amount of liquidity is prudent to have. Um, and then the second thing is that, um, you know, we're, we're, investing isn't just about the math. Investing is also a lot about behavior. And, um, and so we, we need to look inside ourselves and, you know, realize that sometimes stocks moving up and down can be, can be scary. And so we, we each need to figure out uh, kind of the, the maximum amount of money that we can put into stocks, knowing that having that knowledge that, that it's the best way to maintain and grow your purchasing power over time. Uh, that, but where we can feel comfortable that even if it goes down by 50%, that, um, that we can just stick with it and, and stay on, stay on the uh, roller coaster, as Brian likes to say. So um, anyway, uh, the, the, those are the two, two legitimate reasons, you know, two of the most legitimate like reasons. I like that cash flow and kind of endurance. You being able to stay, stay, uh, and stick with the strategy. Brian, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, again, just not to beat a dead horse, but yeah, to reiterate that, yeah, it's those are the two I think most important reasons would be spending needs, you know, that liquidity, or to stay on the roller coaster. I mean, it, essentially, what we're saying is cash is acting like the uh, the seatbelt that helps you stay on the ride while you're going through those ups and downs. Um, so if it provides that comfort for you psychologically, it makes sense. Um, but I guess the, the one other reason I would maybe point to is that sometimes investors might say that uh, cash almost acts like an option on the future. In other words, you're willing to pay an expense uh, of, of d losing money to inflation by stuffing it under the mattress, essentially. You're, you're willing to pay that expense to have an option on maybe future investments that could come along in the future. The reason this would really make sense to us is if you are looking at the rates of return you're earning in cash, and then you're looking at the projected rates of returns on an investment, if the spread between those two gets narrow enough, you might say, eh, I'd rather just stick in cash. I know I'm gonna lose some money here, but I'd rather wait for a better investment opportunity to come along. But in saying that, be really careful because you really you don't want to fall prey to that investor behavior penalty and let that logic have you start to become a market timer. Um, it really should be an objective decision of saying, where is the best place to invest my capital at this time? And for the most part, what we're saying is anything that's short term and is needed in the short run, that makes sense for cash. Anything that's long run we believe pedal to the metal on this uh, extremely uh, beneficial superior asset class of stocks. I love that. So in the long run, the asset class that carries the, the most investment risk in the long run is cash due to the silent purchasing power killer inflation uh, and what we've shown here with the charts. Uh, for a long-term strategy, it's all about investing in what we call global champions, 
that are globally networked, have pricing power with long-term volume growth opportunities, and really is the key to growing long-term wealth over time. Yeah, and for well, us, I think well, this has been a great discussion. Well, I was going to say, yeah. for us, I mean, when you're invested in those things, for me, that does help me sleep well at night. So I actually get more nervous sure. sitting in cash because I know I'm losing money <laughs> over time. So I, yeah, I actually no, sleep true. well yeah. being true. invested in these global champions. Agreed. It's, a, it's a, a great different perspective because I think a lot of people go to cash so that they can, can feel good. But I think what we're showing here and what we're talking about today is you really shouldn't feel good if you're a long-term investor in cash because clearly uh, you're going to lose purchasing power. Yeah. Any concluding thoughts from either of you? I think you nailed no. it on the head. Yeah, I think we, we summed it up pretty well. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, everyone, today. Leave your questions and comments below. Uh, we'll, we'd love to talk about you know, additional topics that you bring up. We'd love to, to read what you have to say about this t particular topic. This has been Common Sense here at YCG. We're grateful uh, for your time and, and for your attention, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.